I would rather be hated for how I won than be loved by how I lost. If you give a brick five chances to score, he's not going to score. If you give a brick 10 chances to score, if you give a brick 50 chances to score, 80 chances to, to score, he'll still score one. <laughs> I would rather be hated for how I won than be loved by how I lost. So a little quote there. That's a little, little, little quote there for, for you guys. And I think that quote is going to signify what this video is about. Because I don't understand the praise for Ange after that game. But at the same time, I do. <laughs> So that seems complicated because, like, once you at the end of this video, you will understand why I don't understand the love he's receiving. But at the same time, after I, my misunderstanding, now I actually do understand what the love is. And it may not be what you guys are that think. But I want to first start with this. There is something we've got to stop doing in football, which is praising only one way of playing. See, the beauty about football is there are many different ways to, to, to play. There isn't an ultimate way of playing. That is bull crap. There is a beauty in attack and there's a beauty in defense. Now, the issue is teams now just don't defend the way that teams used to. So, me being a bit older, I saw peak Katanatsu era. And I believe that I grew up in a son era of, I believe, the best defenders of all time. There are no defenders of this era that can talk to the likes of Baresi, Maldini, Cannavaro, Stam, Desai, Turam, any of these guys. Cole, Ashley Cole. None of the defenders of today can talk to some of the defenders who I believe are amongst the best defenders of all time. So defense back was an art. And I look, I so this is from the 06 World Cup. It's against Australia. I think this was the second round game where Italy had a man sent sense off. And they were down to 10 men for most of the game. And once they did that, they knew what the assignment was, which is be compact, be defensive, try and take your opportunity. Because football, the beauty about football is that it's a chess game and it's highly psychological, it's highly mental. And you have to understand the psychology of the team who's going to man down cool, but also understand the psychology of a team that has a man advantage or a two-man advantage. So let me first start with love. I res Before Tottenham got their sendings off, Tottenham were the better team. Like the way Tottenham were moving the ball around, the one touch, the dynamic movement, how guys were switching positions. You could see how, oh, this is a team within chemistry. And you could, we knew it before kickoff, but you could easily tell that, yes, this, is, this team is a better team than Chelsea, who are going through a lot of uh, an identity crisis. So d all the games they've had, and up until the game really changed, I was like, Andrew particularly the football he's playing with Tottenham and the coaching he's doing with Tottenham, it's money. It is absolutely amazing caution that this dude is, is doing with, with Tottenham. So, you see here, huge turning points in the game. Huge turning points in the game. And you see, at this point, I feel Tottenham, you've got to tweak, but you don't even have to tweak that much. So, for Ange, you can look at this situation here and be like, you know what? Okay, they've got a mana advantage. I can still, and I still want to now maintain how I want to roll. Even though I still think that even if you're a man down, only a man down, I still think this is the, this is the tactic to go through, which is that be compact counter, be compact counter. But fair enough, it's a man down, you can still be in the game. And we've seen guys with a man down beat guys with the extra man. We've seen this many times. This is where things now totally change. I get a man down, Seen many games where 10 men have won. 
the game changed now. You see, football is a very complicated sport. It's very tactical. As I said, it's like chess. Having a one-man advantage is an, is an advantage. It is an advantage. But 10 men can still try and make something happen. A two-man advantage is a seismic change to the context of a game. Because football is all about spacing, trying to create space, taking players out of, out of space. Now, when one player no longer occupies that space, now a guy can now, your players now have to now do extra work to try and now uh, make up for that one-man space. Once it's two men, tactically, it is... Com it completely changes. Completely changes. So, even more so, when that Odogi thing happened, you have to go defensive. And the thing about it is, and this is what people have not realized, Tottenham had the players to play an effective counter-attacking game. And I'll tell you why Ange has to be responsible for losing this, this game. But one thing I don't understand is, that's that's madness. <laughs> you you have nine men, and you're playing that high of a line, which makes no sense. Because you know the the praise that people are giving Ange is, oh my gosh, he was so brave. He was so brave. He maintained his philosophy despite going down to nine men. So if we've got down to five four men, we'll still maintain our philosophy. And I'm like, you clearly don't understand how football works. I understand you maintaining that philosophy with with ten men, even if it's not advisable. But once you go down to nine men and you have a two-man disadvantage, the logistics of the game in terms of your shape drastically changes. So if you're now playing a highland and you're now open and you're pushing men forward with a two-man disadvantage, that is psychotic. There is, if you understand football, understand the tactical game, there is no defense of playing like this when you have a two-man disadvantage. A one-man disadvantage, it's not, it's not an advice. Okay, okay, I mean, uh, okay, but you're, okay, maybe it's worth the risk. You see, one man disadvantage, I won't advise it, but maybe it's worth the risk. It's someone at disadvantage. This is stupid. This is stupid. I'm sorry, with all due disrespect, this is stupid. And here is why, and here's a point that people are not really making here. Um, Chelsea's attacking ain't great. Chelsea's attack isn't good. Chelsea are arguably one of the worst attacking teams in the league. So think about it. If you're going up against one of the worst attacking teams in the league who have been known to struggle against low blocks and have been known and we've seen the evidence. If you'd study this team, you'd study that, bro. When guys sit back, they don't have the players, the ingredients or the personnel to break down a team. That sits in the defensively. So knowing that, why in the hell would you do this? Where see, by doing this, a team that's already a bad attacking team, you give them a greater chance. Because the thing though is, especially you doing this so early in the game, like, because I think that's like the sixth or something minute. So by doing this this early, bro, and as we saw from Charles, just because I'm trying, trying, fail, 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 fail. If you give a brick five chances to score, he's not going to score. If you give a brick 10 chances to score, if you give a brick 50 chances to score, 80 chances to, to score, he'll, he'll score one. <laughs> he will score one out of that 80. He is going one out of five. I don't think he's going one out of 10, but he's going one out of eight. So by doing this, you give a team who are bricks in front of goal 80, 90 chances to score, which they eventually did. Whereas if you sat in defensively and you gave them no space and you forced them to play in front of you, you give them maybe 15 and 20. I don't know, I'm not sure if they score. Oh, you want evidence? Okay, let's look at this. So this is the XG of Chelsea as a team. Yeah, we're going, we're going tactical right now. So from open play, um, Chelsea have scored... Oh my God, is that 13? You're lying. <laughs> that may be true. So Chelsea as a whole, I believe, have scored 13 goals. And oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, whew, sorry. So 
Chelsea, as a team from open play, have scored 13 goals, but that's an XG of 18. So there's a discrepancy there, I believe, of five, I feel. I think there's a discrepancy of five. So expected goals is 18.25, and they've, and they've scored 13 goals. Wow. And keep in mind, four of those goals, keep in mind, four of those goals came against a team with nine men. Four of those goals came against a team with nine men. So, you know. Um, and you look at the players. So, Chelsea's main goal... So, okay, Chelsea's two main goal guys. Sterling. Was that? That's three goals. And with an XG of 3.32. Eh, although you feel like he just scored more, more, more goals. Nicholas Jackson. Chelsea's prime main striker. The main guys that Chelsea are looking for to get goals. Five goals, four of those goals, I repeat, four of those goals came against a nine-man team. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Five goals, three of those goals came against a nine-man team. So, five goals, and he has an XG of 7.55. Shout out to Miss Smallwood, you do the math. Five goals, an XG of 7.55. So... When you look at that data there, again, I'm not a data guy, but to any responsible analyst, you use everything. So for me, you use the eye test, you use the data. So we've seen the data there, just to answer my argument. And you now use the eye test. Chelsea's attack is their weakest part of the team. The midfield, I think, is decent, it's strong. I think the defense is, 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 fr- is really strong, apart from the keeper. Defense, midfield, money. Chelsea's weakest point is the attack. Chelsea don't know how to score goals. So a team that struggle to score goals, wouldn't you want to make it harder, even harder for them to try and even get any opportunities? By doing... And when this happened, Chelsea were still messing up. Chelsea were still messing up. But the thing, though, is that it's like a numbers game and a gamble game. This For me, this is a bad gamble. See, one side of the argument is they're so bad... Let's just give them this chance because we know that they'll, they'll, they'll mess them up. But for me, I feel that's a bad gamble. It's almost like in basketball where a guy who you know is like a bad shooter. So let's Brook. Oh, leave him open. Let's, let's double team Dame. Let's double team Steph. But Westbrook will leave him open because we know that he's going to mess it up. But that is different. That is different from football and this situation and you're giving a team 1v1s several 1v1s because a 1v1 is different from shooting three points shooting three points is way harder than scoring a 1v1 (laughs) so if you're going to give chelsea several 1v1s as bad as they are as horrible as the xg is they're eventually going to score and as Nico Jackson, as we saw, he missed several chances. She have scored a five or six. But he eventually scored three when he have scored five or six. So what people are not pointing out is... I feel Ange is also responsible for Tottenham losing that game. If Tottenham sat back, used the press resistance ability of Baby Suma and the speed and acceleration of Son and Kulisevsky on the counter... I, I, I don't think Chelsea win the game. I think it's probably a draw or Tottenham. The, Tottenham would have had a very good chance of winning the game. And people say, oh, but Tottenham had chances. You see, I think I've done my research. Oh, Tottenham had chances when they went to nine men. Two of those chances came from a free kick, a set piece. And as we've known with teams that have a man advantage, what do you do? Get up to the pitch and try to win a foul. Because again, it's about psychology. The team that has the advantage, especially a two-man advantage, mentally, they're like, we have to win this game. And because they put pressure on themselves to win this game, they push more, further and further and further. And when that opposing team has the ball, because of the pressure they have of like, we should be winning, two-man advantage, we should be winning, two-man advantage, because of the pressure they have upon themselves, they make stupid fouls. Because of their eagerness to win the ball and their eagerness to, to score. That eagerness means... For that team with a two-man disadvantage, you keep coaxing them, keep coaxing them, keep coaxing them, and hit them on, on, on the counter. Because that team with advantage, they are desperate. They're like, wait, we're two-man advantage. 
We have to score. We have to score. We have to score. So they keep pushing forward higher and higher and higher. And for that team, only they just had that quick counter. Just that one ball, that one ball play away, just that one ball over the top for, for Son, and he could be in for a 1v1. That's how football works. You have to understand the dynamics and the psychologies of the game when the situations arise. So people praising Ange for doing this <laughs> with a nine with, with, with a nine man with, with nine men, I'm sorry, it's stupid. But as I said again, I said that as much as I don't understand it, I do. But we have to come to an understanding here. If we don't take Tottenham as a serious team. We don't take them as a big club who, who want to win trophies and continue. Then, then that's fine. Then they should be applauded for the way in which they acquitted themselves playing with nine men. Now, if you're a big team who are expected to win trophies and expected to win games and achieve su su success, then this is unacceptable and this is sackable offence. But I believe that where Tottenham are right now is where they should be and where I think they should always have been. The Mourinho and Conte route was not right for, for them. It wasn't right for them. This was their route. So for these dudes, I think that, you see, for a team like Chelsea, oh, that's why I'm just starting Chelsea. Because for Chelsea, I'm, our team who are expected to win. I expect to win trophies. So despite the way that Chelsea won, all the matters, no, no, Chelsea, you win. And Chelsea's culture from Bram was, by any means necessary, you win. For Tottenham, that shouldn't be their culture. So Conte and Mourinho, that was by any means necessary. Tottenham's culture, I feel, should be win, lose, or draw. Whatever happens, we have a way of playing, and we're here to entertain the crowd. Because for a team who haven't won trophies and are not used to winning trophies, I feel that's the right culture to have. So just as long as we know where, where we're at. But overall, footballing-wise, that should be, be championed in a vacuum. In a vacuum, footballing-wise, that can be championed. Only champion that's using the context of it being Tottenham and the club that Tottenham are. But in general, footballing terms, when you go down to nine men, there is a tactic in which you should use that gives you the best chance to actually win the damn game because last i checked it's about winning <laughs>